Let's consider a model of an infectious disease without immunity. This means that people are in one of only two states. They are either infected, or if they're not infected, they must be susceptible, able to get infected. In this model, there's no removed or recovered state where the person no longer has the disease and is no longer susceptible. Let's make a dynamical system model of this disease. A first step in defining such a model is to determine the state variables. Let's let i of t be the fraction of people infected at time t, and s of t be the fraction of people susceptible at time t. And the idea of the model is that susceptible people can become infected, and when infected people recover, they go back to being susceptible. We can call this model the SIS model, because susceptible people become infected, and after they get over the disease, they become susceptible again. The next step is to derive a rule that determines how susceptible people become infected and infected people become susceptible. But before we do that, we can make one simplification. If people are either infected or susceptible, do we really need to keep track of the fraction of susceptible people as well as the fraction of infected? Here I'm using s as a shorthand for s of t. Both represent the state variable. Sometimes we'll write out the dependence on t explicitly, but other times we'll just write s where the dependence on t is assumed. And the same thing is true for i or i of t. So if we know i, or i of t, what is s, or s of t? If people are either infected or susceptible, then these two fractions must add up to 1, since 100% of the people must be either infected or susceptible. So if we know what i is, s must be equal to 1 minus i. So the answer is no, we do not need to keep track of s separately. We just need one state variable, and we can use i of t. If we know the fraction of people who are infected, we know the entire state of the system. We can infer from that the fraction of people who are susceptible. The next step is to come up with a rule that describes how susceptible people can become infected and how infected people can recover and become susceptible once again. Let's imagine we have a population of people, as illustrated by these little guys. The yellow people represent infected individuals, and the white characters represent susceptible individuals. The idea is that a susceptible individual cannot become infected all alone. In order for a susceptible person to become infected, they must encounter an infected person. Each uninfected or susceptible person has a chance of getting infected when encountering an infected person. And each susceptible person will encounter an infected person at a rate proportional to the number of infected people. So therefore the per capita rate at which a susceptible person is infected is equal to alpha times i for some constant alpha. And the idea is that alpha includes the rate at which a susceptible person runs into an infected person, along with the probability that such an encounter will lead to an infection. This per capita rate captures the rate at which a single susceptible individual will become infected. For our model, we want the total rate at which susceptible individuals are infected. Well, this equals the per capita rate times the number of susceptibles. Or, since we didn't write our model in terms of the total number of infecteds and susceptibles, but the fraction, we actually want the fraction of susceptibles rather than the total number of susceptibles in our rate. The per capita rate is alpha times i, and the fraction of susceptibles is s. But remember, we're not keeping track of the fraction of susceptibles separately. Instead, we're going to let s equal 1 minus i, 
so we'll write the rate at which susceptibles become infected as alpha times i times 1 minus i. This expression is our rate of infection. On our model here at the right, we can label the s to i arrow by the rate of infection alpha i times 1 minus i. To finish describing our dynamical rule, we need to determine the rate of the other arrow, the rate at which infected individuals recover. What's a reasonable way to model this rate? We'll assume that the recovery process doesn't involve the susceptible folks, but just that an individual infected person will recover at some rate. Therefore, it's reasonable to model the recovery rate as being proportional to the fraction of infected individuals. So we'll let the rate of recovery be equal to mu times i for some proportionality constant mu. So let's label the arrow going from i to s by the rate mu times i. To finish specifying our model, we need to put this all together to write down a rule for how the state variable changes. We'll write down a continuous dynamical system model, or a differential equation, so that the change in the state variable i is di dt. And then we just add the effect of the two transitions that we've developed. In one case, we have a transition from s to i, which occurs at the rate of infection. This transition increases the fraction of infective individuals, so it should show up with a positive sign in our differential equation for the change in i. The recovery transition leads to fewer infected individuals, so it should show up with a minus sign in our differential equation. So the differential equation, di dt equals alpha times i times 1 minus i minus mu times i, is our infectious disease model. The model has a single state variable, i, which is the fraction of infected individuals, and two parameters. We could call the parameter alpha the infection rate parameter, and the second parameter, mu, is the recovery rate parameter. The evolution of the disease, of course, will depend on the values of these two parameters. In analyzing this system, we'd like to understand how the behavior depends on these parameters. And that's the subject of the next video.